Okay, guys, I think this is a little bit better camera angle than I had before. Um, thanks for sticking around for part two. Okay, so now I'm going to get a little more technical with the whole breast cancer thing and the way that it affected me, the kind of breast cancer that I had, etc., etc. Um, okay, so the little backstory I gave you about being adopted and everything plays into this whole spiel of my breast cancer story. The reason being because, like I said, being adopted, I always wondered what my back history was and the kind of things that I may have faced, going to face in my future. So I started having testing done for things when I was a lot younger. I started having pap smears when I was like 15 or 16 years old, which I know nowadays that's the norm. That's the good thing. Um, back in the 80s, a lot of girls didn't have that done back then. But I do stress, definitely start having things done early. As long as insurance covers it, by all means, have it done early. Especially if you're sexually active, definitely have those done early. Um, as far as the mammogram goes, I was 30. I think the standard is 40. I was 30 when I started having the mammograms done. They found out right away that I have very dense tissue. They described it to me as having breasts like big cotton puffs. They felt more like boulders. They were very heavy. Um, anyway, so they told me that I would have to have mammograms done. I think I had them done every two years at first. Eventually, it went to every year once I hit 40. When I hit around 41, not to be too technical and too much information, but that's what I'm here for. I've been known to be very blunt with how I talk about things. I do not hold anything back. I tell people everything. So I'm here to tell you everything. I had a period for a year. Yes, a year. I bled every freaking day for a year. And because of insurance, it's wonderful. Don't get me wrong because they pay for all of this stuff to occur, to happen, to pay for all of this breast cancer stuff that I had to go through. Thank God for them. Thank God for breast cancer uh, treatment. Thank God for the breast cancer doctors. Thank God for the insurance to pay for all this stuff because I don't know how people do it. That they, they, they do want that insurance. People tell me they don't have insurance. And I'm, I just don't understand how people do it. I really don't. So thank God for insurance. But when I bled for a year, I was going to the doctor like, oh my God, I've had my children. You know, I, I don't want more kids. Why can't I have a hysterectomy? I have all these things wrong. I had precancerous tissue. I had cervical dysplasia that was really bad. I had fib fibroid, fibroid. I always have trouble saying that word. Fibroid tumors. I had ovarian cysts. I had so many things wrong. I had endometriosis for years. They were surprised when I got pregnant with Jacob, my second son. They said that I probably wouldn't have any more kids after Ryan, my first son. When I married uh, Mike, my husband now, when I married him, they told me the day I got married, go off the pill. You may never have children. A month and a half later, I got pregnant. The doctor that told me that when I got pregnant, when I was showing, I went, bam, there we go. And you thought I couldn't have any kids. <laughs> Ooh, anyway, so uh, they they told me, okay, so we have endometriosis. It's you know going to plague you your whole life kind of thing. So when I bled for a year, it kind of got really bad. I mean, it was so bad. Finally, the doctor said, okay, we're going to have to try to get this, this pushed along. So I had to have like all these pre-testing things done. That's when they found out, okay, not only are you bleeding for a year, not only do you have the migraines and the bad breast tissue, yada, 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 you also have a thyroid condition. I have what's known as Hashimoto's. I also have, it's called hypothyroidism, but it's also Hashimoto's. Yeah, it's a thyroiditis kind of thing, but it's treated for, treated as hypothyroidism. But my symptoms always go as hyperthyroidism. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about my breast cancer. So after I had my hysterectomy, which I had in 2011 before I turned 42 years old, and as another little story to add in there, I always wanted a tattoo. Like I wanted a tattoo on my life. Always wanted one. When I had my hysterectomy, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have a tattoo. I've always wanted a tattoo. I'm going to have a tattoo. So one day, got in my car. It was spring break for my son. I'm like, come on, Jake. I'm going to go get a tattoo. He said, no, no, you're not. I'm like, get in my car. Come on. We'll get a tattoo. 
go to the car, go to the tattoo shop. I go in, bam, get a tattoo. He's like recording it. He's like, oh my God, mom's going to tattoo. Can't see it really, but I got a, I got a cross tattoo back here. A month later, bam, in the car again, another cross, cross tattoo. And I got the words on the back. It says, only God may judge. Back of my neck, only God may judge. Because only God may judge the things that we go through, the things that we do. Then I kind of got addicted and kind of, you know, anyway. So, yeah. Um, getting back to the breast cancer, because I did go off topic quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, after I went through that, and I had a hysterectomy, then I had some other problems that just kind of plagued me after that. Like, things just kind of kept happening to me. And I was like, oh, my God, what's next? So, I started having 3D mammograms done, which kind of went deeper and deeper into my tissue. Then when dad moved in, I kind of put that on hold and I missed a year. He died in 2013. He lived a year and a half. They said he wouldn't live for six to nine months. Was that, That's what they gave him, six to nine months. A year and a half. That's how long that man fought that breast, that, oh my God, breast cancer. That's how long he fought the bladder cancer in his lungs. He did not show it. Literally, the man did not show it. You would not have known that he had cancer. Until the last month or so, he literally went to his AA meetings, went to his weekly lottery ticket buying that he did, his weekly CVS trips, Walmart. I mean, he just, he didn't let it stop him. He just did everything that he normally did. Um, so really, he just didn't let life stop him at all. Didn't let anything stop him in his life. He just kind of kept going the way that he always did. And, um... The last week he was alive is when he went, bam, crash. And that's literally what he did. He fell. He fell in his room upstairs, the heart of bam, and he crashed. He fell a week later, less than a week later, he was gone. So I kind of let myself go um, after that for the first couple of months. I was gone. My weight bombed out. Um, I, sorry about all the beeps. I'm having my sister text me during this. Um, a lot of heartache, I guess you would say. I kind of went into a little bit of depression um, after he died. I felt guilty because while he was with us, I kind of avoided him a lot because I had the mentality of, as a little girl, dad, you moved, you know, you, you stayed in Maryland. You didn't come for me. Um, that plagued me a little bit growing up, but that's neither here nor there, you know. He was with me when he was. Um, this is not about dad anyway, so I don't know why I'm making it about dad. But, yeah, I'm kind of talking about dad. So, anyway, when he when he died, I did not have a mammogram that year. I lost a bunch of weight, went down to like 101 pounds. I got really, really thin. Um, Then I got, like, my dream job of being um, a vet assistant, working with animals, which I love animals. So I got that job and did that, and everything was going really good. And then one day I was in the shower. I had lifted a 50-pound pit bull up on a table that day, and I felt something. And I was like, man, I must have pulled a muscle because that, that really hurts. And then I was like, oh, my God. You know, what is that? What is this thing? So I like lifted my arm up and I felt this knot underneath my arm. And I thought, Dad, going, that's a that's a big bruise. That's like a really big bruise. So I felt it again and I looked and, and I didn't see anything in the you know in the mirror after I got out of the shower. So I went to Mike and I said, Honey, I said, feel that. Does that does that feel normal to you? And he's like, No, I don't that doesn't feel normal. That I don't know what that is, but that doesn't feel normal to me. You better call the doctor. That was a Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday, work was really, really hectic, so I didn't get a chance to stop and call the doctor. Friday, um, our office was closed as far as doctor visits. We went in just to do paperwork and things like that. So I went in just to take care of those kind of things. So I had a little break in the day, and I called the doctor, made an appointment. Went in Tuesday, saw uh, the nurse practitioner. I had never seen her before, so she had never examined me before. So she said she wasn't really sure what she was feeling. Um, but she didn't think it was anything, but she was sending me for a diagnostic mammogram, which is where they kind of compare mammograms, go a little deeper with the mammogram and an ultrasound to see whether or not there was really anything there worth seeing. 
took my husband with me because I was a little, little nervous. Um, he came along. They did the mammogram on the right, the right breast where I felt, I felt it. They called it the seven o'clock position. Um, the doctor came back in. He goes, um, we need to see the other side. We're going to, we're going to do a, a mammogram on the left side because we're not really seeing anything. So we need to compare. I said, okay. Came in, they got me. Did the mammogram on the left side. So they really didn't see anything. They said I had extremely dense tissue. And I said, yeah, I know. I've, I've been told that for years. Took me back for the ultrasound. During the ultrasound, the ultrasound tech, tech kept going, hmm. Hmm. And that's what she did the entire time. And I did not feel comfortable the whole time that she did it. I was like, okay, something's not quite right. And then she kept moving the ultrasound equipment, like, up underneath my arm, which I really didn't know why. But she kept going up underneath here. And the more that she went underneath here, the more uncomfortable I felt and the more mm, noise that she kept making. And Mike is sitting behind me, and I didn't... I didn't turn around and look at him, didn't didn't hear anything coming out of him. So she told me, she said, um, okay, so I'm going to go out and get the doctor. Don't get dressed or anything because he may want to take a look at this. Don't don't feel, you know, don't feel nervous or anything, but he may want to look at this. And the nurse practitioner told me, if she says, you know, she wants to look at things in depth more, don't be nervous. This is usually what they tell you, so just be okay. Everything will be okay if she tells you this. So I expected that. So I told my husband, you know, don't worry about it. If that, if that happens, um, so that, that was expected. I'm kind of getting a late. Hold, hold, hold tight. Just a minute. Just, just, I'll be right back. Be right back. Okay. Sorry about that. That, that, that light coming in the window was kind of weird. Anyway, I don't know how to edit yet, so we're just going to go, I kind of go with it. Um, anyhow, so he comes in, he looks at it, and he's like, okay, show me what you were concerned with. And I heard the word concern, and of course, my mind just <laughs> goes after that. So she shows him, and he goes, okay, so you have some enlarged lymph nodes. And I'm thinking, I'm here for breast lump in your tonka lymph nodes. Oh, okay, so, okay, tell me some more. So he says, um, we're going to do a biopsy right away. So I hear Mike behind me, he, I hear him sniffling, and I'm thinking, oh my God, he's crying, I can't look at him. Not even going to turn around. So says, we can't, we can't um, do anything this week because this was already Tuesday when I went in to her and see, I think I had my, yeah, it was Thursday, I think, when I went in to see him for my, my, my ultrasound and stuff. So they got me in the following week. I went in for um, my biopsy. I was nervous as all get out of the needle, not the biopsy of the needle. Tattoos, like, and I'm nervous of a needle. That's me. I'm terrified of needles. I don't understand why I can have tattoos all over me and I crave them like people crave cigarettes. I crave tattoo needles. I am terrified of other kind of needles. But I was terrified of the needles. So I asked the girl that was scheduling the biopsy who became really good friends with me because she was diagnosed with cancer right after I was. So we became really close friends. It was very ironic that she was actually diagnosed with breast cancer. And I love this woman with like all my heart and soul. So Chris, if you're watching, I love you. You've been my rock, my solid rock. Um, anyway, um, I saw her like in the hallway too after after she made my biopsy appointment. And she's like, you'll feel a little pinch of of the, the needle they give you of the lidocaine. That they numb you with first. But then after that, you shouldn't feel anything. So you'll be okay. So the, the doctor came in, introduced himself to me. His name, I think it was Dr. Harry, I think was his name. I have it written down somewhere. So anyway, he came in and he numbed me here. And little pinch, no big deal. And then he numbed me up underneath my arm because they were going to do multiple. And then I got to watch it. And that was really cool because I, I like watching stuff like that. I like I like watching like Dr. Pimple Popper and things like that. My husband tells me I'm gross, but I like stuff like that. So anyway... So they put this long needle in, the long needle has to go through and has to go from here all the way in to where they're going to collect this tissue, like all the way through. Oh my God, that thing hurt so bad. I am not going to lie to you. They did not let the, let the, I guess the lidocaine didn't numb long enough for that thing to go in there to numb. But after that first went in and after I went, ah, 
Yeah. After that first one went in, it was fine. I didn't feel any of the other needles that went in. Everything was fine. It was more like somebody just kind of took hot liquid and just poured in me and then put boiling water on top of that and then put candle wax on me. Yes, yeah, so that's the way that was. But other than that, after that first little fear of life, you know, kind of went through me, it was okay. So I watched them take multiple samples and it was like this drill they kind of put in and you heard it kind of zoom in and zoom out, and which was really neat. It really was. They went in and took the tissue out. And then when he would start to underneath my arm, I asked the nurse, I said, am I going to feel that, that pain again? And she said, probably, but I did not. I did not feel the, sh the tissue taken underneath my arm at all. Did not feel anything underneath the arm. Woke up the next day. I had a huge bruise. Um, I'm going to try to figure out maybe in the next few videos. I'm going to try to figure out a way to show pictures. So I will warn you before I show you pictures because they are very graphic. Um, I do want to show that. I want to show everything. I want to show scars and everything. That way you guys kind of know everything that people go through when they go through these kind of things. Because I want the world to know that breast cancer is a real cancer. A lot of people say, oh, you have breast cancer. Oh, it's just, that's the easy cancer. There is no easy cancer. I don't care what kind of cancer it is. I don't care if it's prostate, oral, um, throat, bladder, lung, ovarian cervical. I don't care what kind of cancer it is. There is no easy cancer. And do not let anybody tell you that. Stage zero, one, two, three, four. There's no easy cancer. My cancer is stage three. I found out three days after my, bi my, after my biopsy. My biopsy was December 6th, 2016. I already knew. It's like you just know. I don't know how to explain it. You just know. When you find something like that, you just kind of know. And I told Mike and I told Jake, I said, Emory, I'm like, I just know it is. They tell him, they told me, you don't say that, you know, and I'm, no, I just knew it. Kind of like when I got pregnant with both my boys, I knew the second, like literally, I don't know how, I knew the second I got pregnant. I knew before I missed my period, before I took any tests. It was the same way this time. I just knew, I just knew I was pregnant. I mean, I knew I had breast cancer. I just knew that I had it and I knew it was going to be okay. I knew God was with this, I get this, this sheet and they, they set me down and it was Friday, December 9th, 2016. And Mike went with me, of course. And this sheet had all this stuff listed and it was like the type of cancer it was. And the only thing I remember is like, she's like, I'm sorry, you have breast cancer. And I said, yeah, I know. And she just looked at me like, okay. <laughs> so they gave me like a list of doctors, you know, you want to see this doctor, that doctor, yada, yada. So I picked out the doctor I wanted to go see. And I went to see her the following Monday and she told me that um, my cancer was actually in micro calcifications. It was actually spread across my breast. So they would have to do an MRI. Another thing I was terrified for because I'm extremely claustrophobic. Um, they needed to do the MRI to determine exactly where it was to see whether or not it had spread anywhere else in my body. It had already gone into the lymph nodes in my arm. They wanted to make sure that it hadn't spread across to the other breasts, which thank God it did not. Um, they wanted to check to see how wide it was, how big it was, how deep it was, et cetera, et cetera. I have what is called invasive ductal carcinoma. There is different types of breast cancer as far as whether it's in the ducts, whether it's outside of the ducts. Um, there's triple negative breast cancer, there's triple positive breast cancer. There's, these things just mean the different types of cancer and where it's located in the breast and in the tissue. Invasive ductal carcinoma is, like it says, invasive. It's already in the tissue. Mine, like I said, it already spread into the lymph node. Um, stage three out of stage four. Four means it's spread in other parts of the body besides the, the lymph nodes in these lymph nodes. It means it's going like, like another part, another organs. So mine had, it's close, but not quite there. Um, also have what's called HER2 positive. HER2 is actually a human, I have it written down because I always forget how to say this. It is a human ep epidermal receptor. It's actually, um, it's a protein gene that's actually, it's a gene mutation. Okay, it's actually the way they the, the way they described it to me is 
it's a mouth for the cancer cell. So it goes out and gets all the bad things and brings it to the cancer cell and causes the cancer cell to make copies of itself. So this gene on mine was a three plus over expression. They told me my cancer had a 35% chance of reoccurrence and they had to get it right away. So I had the MRI done and my, my lump that was actually a cluster of lumps was four inches wide, which was pretty large. At first, they thought it was only like two inches wide. So by the time they did the MRI, they said it was four inches wide. I met my cancer doctor, my oncologist, on December 16th. December 22nd, I started chemo. It was, it was, it was Christmas. Christmas, I was sick. I was really sick. It was a hard Christmas. My family came in. Um, my stepdaughter came in from Florida with our new grandbaby. Um, she was, let's see, she wasn't very old. So, I mean, literally... She'll be five this year. So, you know, she was three years old and she was pregnant with her, her second baby who will be two years old next month. So yeah, it was, it was not a good Christmas. I barely remember hardly any of it because I was sick the entire time. Um, but my chemo consisted of four, four different drugs, Taxotere, Carboplatin, Herceptin, and Progetta. The last two, Herceptin and Progetta, is specifically targeted for the HER2 status. I was ER, PR negative. ER and PR or are called um, your estrogen and progesterone. It's a hormone, hormonal type of cancer. So my cancer was not hormone or fed. So thank God for that because the way my gynecologist told me that if I would not have had my hysterectomy, it's a very strong possibility that it would have gone to that the organs and I would have had to have a hysterectomy anyway. So it kind of, it played better for me to have my hysterectomy when I did. So I didn't have that. But that being said, when you do have hormonal positive cancer, hormonal positive cancer, there are drugs that you can take that helps with that, that you can actually take a pill form and it helps with that. Um, that's not always true. Because that's, it's kind of, it's hard to explain because when I, I don't have that type of cancer, so it's hard for me to explain that type of cancer to you. But I do know that people, um, there are pills they can take for like five years after they've gone through chemo that helps keep the cancer away. I had to do six rounds. I did chemo every three weeks um, of the TCHP, that's what we called it, um, chemo, prior to my surgery. Um, right before I had to have my surgery, we thought we were going to do a lumpectomy to take the lump out. And then I would just do 12 more rounds of my Herceptin to keep the, the HER2 status gone. Didn't work out that way because my lump ended up spreading across being larger than we thought, etc., etc. So we opted for the mastectomy. She wanted to take one breast. I told her I wanted both of them gone. I was almost 50 years old. I wanted them both gone. Kind of had a little fight with that. She didn't want to do both, yada, yada. The insurance agreed to do both because I was adopted. I went and had um, the genetic testing done, not knowing since I was adopted whether or not I was a positive for the BRCA2, BRCA, BRCA1, BRCA2 gene that could be passed down to my children because boys do get breast cancer. Don't let anybody tell you they don't because they do. Luckily, thank God, I did not possess that gene, so I did not have that to pass down to my children. So that's a blessing. Um, I also got tested for like prostate cancer genes that, that women can have that can be passed down. And I do not have that gene either. Um, but the insurance still paid for me to remove both, so I did. So I removed both. After that, that was in May of 2017 that I had the surgery. After that, I had to have 12 more rounds of the Herceptin, which was also done through IV. I had a port put in, so I had to have 12 rounds done. So that's like more chemo, but it's not strong chemo that causes the vomiting and nausea and all the nasty stuff. However, I had a skin reaction. Herceptin causes skin reactions in a very small population, and I was that population. I had extreme, like major itching. It happened a little bit during my chemo, but I'm allergic to the sun. I have what's called um, vitiligo. Michael Jackson had it. He had the white spots on his skin. Why well, have it too? You can kind of 
I don't know if you can see it in the video. Um, probably can't because the lighting. But I have white splotches. You can, well, there's one right there. You can see it. Um, but anyway, I'm allergic to the sun. So when everybody else is having fun going to the beach and all that good stuff, I can't. And it really sucks because I go out in the sun for 15 minutes with SPF 110. And I blister up and I itch very bad. And it sucks. Because I love the beach. And I hate the fact that I can't enjoy that kind of stuff. So it really sucks. So when... I was going through chemo, it increased the sun sensitivity. So I would literally walk outside and walk back in and have like, like big old spots on me from, from the sun. And I would itch and itch and itch and scratch and scratch and scratch. So we thought that's what it was from. Well then, you know, I was going through chemo. I started my chemo in December. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm going through chemo. It's like winter time. Well, there's still sun in winter. No big deal. So we, we just kind of blew it off. Well then after I had my surgery, which was in, which was in May, and I started radiation, and I did radiation, 25 treatments of radiation, which lasted through August. And then in August, I started my Herceptin again, and then the itching came. And we're still thinking, okay, summer, no big deal. And then it continued, and it continued and continued. And then I went to a dermatolog dermatologist, and she's like, oh, no, honey, this is not sign. This is Herceptin. Come to find out, it was the Herceptin. So I had a skin reaction, which they noted that in my chart. So now I've come to find out. Okay, have a skin reaction to Herceptin, add that to my list of things that is wrong. Also found out when I had my port put in, I have an adhesive reaction. We didn't know that. I can wear Band-Aids. I just can't wear the big adhesive things. So when I had my port taken out, they couldn't use adhesive dressing or anything on me. Um, what else? Um, the Herceptin and Progetta. Okay, so the good thing about when I got my breast cancer is that the FDA approval for the Herceptin happened in 1998. That's the year Mike and I got married, by the way. We getting ready to have our 21st anniversary. Anyway, um, Progetta didn't get approved to 2012. So if I would have gotten breast cancer when I was younger, I wouldn't have had those two life-saving things. Sorry, honey, gotta call you back. Um, so, I wouldn't have been able to probably sit here and talk to you right now. I was very, 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 very fortunate because they told me when I had my surgery that all the tissue that came back was all negative. So, all that chemo, all the nasty, gross stuff that I went through with the chemo kept the cancer. <laughs> Soulmates calling me to cancer. Oh, okay, okay. I gotta wrap this up. I gotta make this really quick ending here. Um, I will tell you more about that goodness in my next video. I am on another drug right now that just got FDA approved last 2016. I'll tell you more about that in my next one. Thanks for listening to me for the next almost half an hour. It's almost been. Um, I have so much more to share with you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Ma, 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 ma. Love you. Oh.